and we're slowly filling up in the church, but also hopefully we're filling up more and more on Zoom as well. If this is your first time visiting us uh, through Zoom, I know there's some new people here, it's great to have you with us. Uh, you're very welcome. Uh, this isn't how we'd usually want to start September, is it, at church? Normally we'd have an all-age service, we'd be full to the rafters in here, everyone would be doing the actions together. Um, but at the same time, we, we just make the most of what we can do at the moment, and we've got God's word. We've got Jesus with us, and that's what's important. So let's pray, and then we'll look at this Bible passage together. Lord, thank you so much that at these strange times, we can still turn to you, we can still learn from you, we can still focus our minds on Jesus. Please help us to see how great he is this morning. Amen. Gospel. What do you think when you hear the word gospel? Maybe uh, this is the first thing that came to my mind. Gospel choir. Yeah. Like this. Normally, normally very joyful, singing, praising. That's, that's gospel, isn't it? Um, or maybe when, when you hear the word gospel, it's that, that's gospel, what he said. That's absolutely true. Maybe you think that's what you know, think of that when you, when you hear the word gospel. Or maybe gospel is a, the set of principles, the gospel of cooking. This is, this, is the, this is how you cook. Mark starts this account of Jesus' life that we're about to start looking at this term, and he starts it by saying, this is gospel. This is the gospel. This is the beginning of the gospel, he writes in verse 1. But what does he mean by gospel? I think there's two things we can see in this passage about the gospel. What is the gospel? The first is this. The gospel is real news, not fake news. Real news, not fake news. Now I've got a game for us to play. Okay, real news or fake news? Hopefully everyone can see that at home as well. And uh, I'm gonna go for some pictures and uh, I want you to vote whether it's real news or fake news. If you think it's real news, you need to put your thumb up because can't, we can't hear you on Zoom, but we can see you. You need to put your thumb up. If you think it's fake news, you need to put your thumb down. Okay, real news or fake news? Some of the first one, John. Pepper Pig bands. What does it say? Uh, I couldn't read the head. What's the headline say? Producers have responded to the fact that it encourages children to be naughty. And so there's been complaints, and Pepper Pig has been banned. Who thinks that's uh, real news or fake news? Up for real news, down for fake news. We do it in the church building as well. Oh, oh, some people are hoping it's real news. <laughs> okay, we've got a bit of a mix there. I think mainly thumbs down, people think it's fake news. John, do you want to reveal the answer? Pepper Pig Ban. It is fake news. We need a picture of Donald Trump going, fake news, don't we? Okay, next one. Pre baptizes baby using a water pistol. It's a, a video that went viral. Thumbs up for real news, thumbs down for fake news. Well, a lot of people I think have seen there's a lot of thumbs up, some thumbs down. Okay. Okay. Well, let's have a look. This one might surprise you. It's actually fake news. It was staged. So uh, it wasn't actually holy water in the water pistol. Apparently it was a staged uh, picture that, it, that they uh, were pretending. Okay, next one. US election, Trump tells voters to vote twice. Real news or fake news? Well, we've got a mix in the church. Okay, okay, a lot of people think that's fake news. 
Let's have a look. It's real news. You can't make it up, can you? He told that they should try voting twice. Once, normally once by po postal vote to, to test the system. There you go. It's actually illegal what he told them to do. Uh, a, another one. Redeemer Press. Poo free since July 23. It's been an unprecedented time in Ewood recently. Residents had got used to encountering the sloppy, disgusting remains of inconsiderate dog owners. However, for a record two weeks, there hasn't been a single poo-related complaint. Long may it continue. Real news or fake news? <laughs> Yes, you're right. <laughs> Fake news. I had a lot of fun with some stuff on the internet that helps you, helps you write these. Uh, these things. And then one last one, I think. Vickers videos break the internet. Over 2 million dislikes. Real news or fake news? Thumbs up for real news. John, John could imagine it being real news. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta mix up on Zoom. Okay, what have we got? Fake news. Nowhere near two million likes or dislikes. All publicity is good publicity. Thanks. You can stop sharing the screen now. Now, some people think Christianity is fake news, don't they? You know, it's just made up thousands of years ago by some blokes in somewhere we don't even know existed. But Mark writes here, well, he writes about Jesus and he says, this is news, this is, this is real news, not fake news. So um, Mark who wrote this gospel, this account of Jesus' life, he's mentioned elsewhere in the Bible, in the book of Acts, which is like the history of the early church. And Mark was a, a companion to Peter. And Peter was one of the 12 disciples. He was one of the guys who hung ground with Jesus, who heard all about Jesus and what he said. And Mark and Peter uh, were, were close. And so Mark is, is writing on behalf of Peter. He's writing on behalf of the eyewitness, the accounts of Jesus' life. And Mark isn't the only account of Jesus, is it? There's, there's four Gospels. There's other accounts of Jesus outside that, but in the Bible there's, there's four Gospels, four accounts of Jesus' life. And these four accounts are similar, but they're also a bit different as well. And actually that's further proof that this is real news, not fake news. So imagine a crime was committed here at St. Bartholomew's right now. Someone came in punched me and left. And the police came and uh, they were taking statements of everyone who saw the incident. Now imagine they asked John Cowell, who's on the sound desk, what did you see, John? John would say, well, they came in in the main door. I saw them from the sound desk come in the main door. They pushed Derek out of the way as he tried to stop him. Uh, they walked down the middle of the church, hit Chris, and left. That's, that would be John's account of the situation. Uh, now, uh, Marilyn, who's watching on Zoom, I think, she would have seen the same thing, but from a different point of view, wouldn't she? She, she? she would have said, well, I was just watching Zoom, Chris was preaching, then suddenly this bloke just appeared, punched him in the head, and they both disappeared. That's from Marilyn's point of view. What about my point of view, my statement? Oh, I said, I was just, just reading the Bible, I was, I was into it. And then before I knew it, I looked up and something hit the side of my head and everything went black. So exactly the same event, but, but there's three different ways of telling it there, aren't there? From slightly different perspectives. But they all fit together. And that's what you'd expect from eyewitnesses. Now, if everyone tells the story exactly the same, well, something's going on a bit fishy, is it? Some of you might have kids, some of you might be teachers. 
And when a group of kids have been caught doing something and all their stories are exactly the same and all their explanations use exactly the same words, you think, hmm, you've come up with this before and haven't you? You're lying to me. So when we read the Bible, we see that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they're similar, but they also have differences. It's good evidence that they really are eyewitnesses' accounts. They're real news, not fake news. Other evidence for them being real news is, is that they fulfill predictions made hundreds and hundreds of years earlier. So Mark actually quotes Isaiah in this passage, doesn't he? Isaiah's writing about 600 years before Jesus was born. And Isaiah, he's a prophet, he predicts that there's a messenger who's going to come and he's going to preach that God is coming to earth. And then 600 years after Isaiah predicts this, John the Baptist turns up. And that's what he preaches. It'd be a bit like your great, 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 great grandfather predicting the coronavirus outbreak. That's what Isaiah is doing. There are actually at least 65 direct predictions in the Old Testament that are fulfilled, that come true in the New Testament through Jesus. And a lot of those Jesus had no specific control over fulfilling. He didn't, as a in his human nature, he didn't choose where he was born, and yet he was born where the Old Testament said he was born. He didn't choose his family, and yet he had the family the Old Testament said he would have. He lived, the Old Testament said he would live. He died, the Old Testament said he would die. See, the gospel, the, the news about Jesus is real news, not fake news. It's about a real person, Jesus Christ, steeped in history. See, Mark doesn't start his gospel like this. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Or once upon a time in a mystical land. He starts it by saying... This is news about a person in a real place in Nazareth and Jerusalem and the River Jordan with real things occurring. The gospel is real news, not fake news, and it's about Jesus. That's the first thing we see the gospel is about. The second thing is this, the gospel is good news, not sad news. The gospel is good news, not sad news. Let's play that game again. Uh, you can put people up uh, on the screen. Good news or sad news? Okay. Thumbs up for good news, thumbs down for sad news. Mm. Burnley win the Premier League. Good news or sad news? Have we got anyone who thinks that's good news? <laughs> I know we have some, got some Burnley supporters and some of our home but no, no, people think that's, oh, Jeff's not sure, yeah, okay, very good. Uh, what does Naomi think? She's, yeah, oh, she thinks it's good news, oh dear. She's going to be a Preston supporter when she grows up, so I don't know what that's, that's about. Um, kids going back to school this week, good news or sad news? <laughs> Some parents are like, yes, got rid of them. <laughs> but like, what do the kids think? You got any kids on? What do they think? Parents like it. What does Ella think? Yes? Oh, there you go. Brilliant. She likes it. Good. Um, the weather forecast for Blackburn. <laughs> For the next week, good news or sad news? Probably. <laughs> I'm not looked at him, but I'm guessing. <laughs> guessing. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, right, right. Thanks. You can um, uh, move that if you want, John. Now, some people are, are not unbothered if Christianity is true, or 
or maybe they are convinced it might be true, their problem is that they just think it's a bit irrelevant or, or rubbish. It's, it's not that important. It's sad news. But right at the start of this gospel, Mark wants to say, this is good news. This is momentous news. This is life-changing news. This is the best news you'll ever hear. Uh, actually, in that word gospel, it's a word used for like momentous news being proclaimed. We've got a new ruler. A king has been born, like at the start of the Lion King, where they hold hold told told him this is gospel, good news. A new king. Jesus is the king. It's good news. Why is Jesus such good news? Well, have a look at verse 8 if you've got your Bible in front of you. I'll read it. John the Baptist has been living up to his name, earning his title, baptizing anything that moves, as people confess their sin. But then he says this in verse 8 I baptize you with water, but he, this person who's coming, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Can you see what John's saying there? He's saying, I might be able to make you clean on the outside. I'm not sure how clean the River Jordan was, but probably before lots of pollution. I can make you clean on the outside. I can baptize you on the outside. But, but someone's coming, this, this, this Messiah, this person, this God-man is coming. And he will be able to purify you on the inside with the Holy Spirit. He'll change you from the inside out. He'll clean you from guilt. He'll clean you from sin. He'll make you pure. Don't you want to be pure? Don't you want to be freed from guilt? We all carry it, don't we? Sometimes guilt can feel a bit like a rucksack on our back weighing us down. Some people feel it more than others. But, but we all carry it. We've all done wrong. We've all fallen short. We've certainly all fallen short of God's standards. I listened to a, a band called Mumford and Sons. I don't know if you've heard of them. One of their songs, they sing this. And can you kneel before the king, before God, and say, I'm clean, I'm clean. Could you kneel before the holy God and say that? See, when I look at my life and the things I've done, I, I think based on them, no. Based on what I've done, no chance. But this is good news because John says, someone's coming who can clean you on the inside. He can purify you. And then wham, bam, Mark's gospel is like this. What happens next? Verse 9, Jesus appears. And he's, we see that he's the one who can do this. Verse 10, Jesus was coming out, out, out of the water. Heaven was torn open. The Spirit descended on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. It's almost like God is, the Father now is turning the spotlight on Jesus and saying, he's the one. This is, this is the one. He's come to make you clean. And the reason Jesus can do that where no one else can, where we can't ourselves, is because Jesus alone is, is the perfect son of God. Jesus alone resists temptation. Jesus alone succeeds where we always fail. We see him resisting temptation in the wilderness. It's a bit like this. Which of these cloths would you rather be cleaned by? This is my garden cloth. I don't know if you've got one of these. Uh, I use it to, to wipe the dirty table when, when I need to check my oil on my uh, car. You, check your oil. You, need to, you need to wipe it, don't you, before you dip it. Um, it just hangs outside. Uh, it's used. That's my garden. 
it's a bit, bit filthy, isn't it? I hope you can see that on Zoom here. Now, if you tried to clean yourself with this cloth, what would happen? It get you get you more dirty, wouldn't you? Wouldn't it? Yeah. And actually, that's a bit of a picture of of when we try and be pure, when we try and be perfect without God, when we try and clean ourselves up. It's a bit like us cleaning ourselves with this cloth. We don't make ourselves any cleaner. In fact, sometimes we make ourselves dirtier. We might be able to clean ourselves on the outside, but, but it doesn't sort out our pride or our self-righteousness. It doesn't sort out the insides. In fact, God says if we're relying on ourselves to make ourselves pure, we're just making ourselves dirty. Jesus himself is the only completely perfect and pure one. This is as pure a dishcloth as I could find in my house. It's clean, pure like Jesus. And when we come to Jesus, he washes us. And he takes the dirt away, takes the guilt away, takes the sin away. He takes it on himself. He becomes sin so we can become pure. That's what happens when he dies on the cross. And so when we trust in Jesus, when we're following him, we can kneel before the king and say, I'm clean. Not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus has done for me. And that's why the gospel is good news. It's not about pulling our socks up and trying to live better and trying to be moral. It's not about feeling guilty or going through the religious motions on a Sunday morning. It's about Jesus. It's about what he did for us. Nearly every other world religion, um, even some forms of Christianity, um, their message is pretty much do, 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 do this, God will accept you. Do this, God will be pleased with you. Do this and you'll get rid of guilt. Mark says, biblical Christianity adds two, two letters on the word of that. Any, not do, but done. When we trust Jesus, the work is done. The gospel's good news about Jesus. It's true news, not fake news. It's good news, not sad news, because it's about what Jesus has done for us. I'll mention this in the notices later, but, but in a few weeks, we'll be offering an opportunity for, for everyone to explore this good news even more. We'll explore who Jesus is, what he's come to do, how we can respond to him. We're going to be uh, doing that by inviting everyone. I hope everyone in our church and watching this will come and join a Christianity Explored course on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday evening. Uh, an eight-week course looking at the person of Jesus, exploring more of this good news. So I don't know where you are in your Christian journey right now. I don't know what you think might be the next step on that. Why not give it a go and explore this news, real news, not fake news, good news, not sad news, news all about Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that Mark has written this, that we can read this good news. And Lord, please, as we do that, as we look at Mark in our sermons in the morning, in Christianity Explored, uh, weekday evenings, that you'd give us more certainty and security in our faith, that you'd help us to understand the message better, and that this 
good news would fill our hearts, give us joy that would overflow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.